All right. We've had a cost of living conversation. We've been having that this morning and we've been having a, a, a budget conversation and looking at responsibilities um, for government and what Kenyans then have rights to. It continues this hour um, into and we're looking at the legislative arm in terms of who does what and where conversations are happening. The Member of Parliament for Yatta constituency, Basil Robert Ngui, is our guest this hour. Mweshimiwa, good morning. Good morning. I'm happy to be here today. It's my first time to be a Spice FM. Indeed. Welcome to Kenya's Biggest Conversation. Thank you. You are currently sitting in the hot seat. I can see. Yes. <laughs> we should call it the spicy seat. <laughs> um, the seat of reality, I guess. Yes, right. yes. Many matters to be discussed this morning. But um, just before we get things fired up, City will welcome you today with the proverb from DRC. Yes. Uh, the whole of this week, our proverbs uh, are from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Hmm? One of the things that Congo is best remembered for, unfortunately, is conflict. Mm. And somewhere in the mix, one forgets just how mineral and resource, natural resource rich this country actually is. And in that confusion, one even forgets not just the conversational potential, but the actual potential that the country has. And one can't help avoid looking and asking whether these conflicts are directly related mm. uh, to those potentials. Right. But that having been said, let's look at the proverb. In every village, there is a white chicken. <laughs> In your village, is there a white chicken? Is that chicken? The, the well, there is, <laughs> but in terms of the color, I don't think white is a dominant color. Well, no. the previous My guest opinion. said that white chickens are politicians. Do you agree? Well, what do you make of this? <laughs> okay. Metaphorical. <laughs> Before Mark puts you properly, yeah. what do you make of the problem? <laughs> well, I'm trying to, 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 to digest it, basically to get the analogy mm. behind the problem, but... Mm. I believe, um, I mean, when you talk of white chicken, uh, every white village. White chicken. No, mm. Not many white chickens. Mm. We just say in every a. village, it is a white chicken. A white chicken. Uh, one. So, Politic. in other words, it could be a remnant, you know, that outstanding. Maybe a, a deviant, someone who is uh, seen as, it's like in every house, mm. in every family, they say there is one person who is a black sheep opposite yeah. to the others mm. the way they say in my tribe there is no single market without a mad person every market has a mad person mm. good so that tends to align to that analogy mm. and uh, it's interesting because they tend to cut across most of the african countries that's true yeah it's very true so much you are I mean, it's interesting. Uh, CT, I don't know. CT, I don't know how many. We're saying yes, 10 over 10. No, on a scale, if this were an exam, on a scale of 1 to 10, you'd have gotten 10. Thank you. Imagine mm. that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, on that, at least on that, he's mm. giving you 100%. Mm. Now, on this other issue, uh, I'm not so sure, but I guess we'll know by the time we come to the end of it. Mm. Uh, because now we're asking tough questions, Mweshimiwa. And first of all, I think as we continue into this conversation around the cost of living, it is a pain point. And anybody who's not talking about it right now, then maybe heads are in the sand or in the clouds. Mm. Um, so, first of all, we want to get your feeling, your understanding. As a member of parliament, mm. a member of the National Assembly tasks with the role of legislation, a budget-making parliament. What is your idea of the cost of living right now? What's happening in the country? Well, what I would say, currently things are above the roof. Very few few people can afford the basics in their families is the worst moment in our history and um, there are so many blames coming in particularly when they say they inherited an empty government a government with no resources i don't fully agree to that because as much as kibaki did inherit a similar government but the cost of living was not to the tune it is today if you look at education system the poor can't go to school mm. you know Medical health infrastructure has completely collapsed. If you go to most of the dispensaries, there are no drugs. Unemployment today is above the roof. Every time we are hearing in increment on fuel, uh, the global oil prices has reduced by 5.68%. But in Kenya, we have not reduced by that 
a percentage. Today they have only reduced by two shillings. And that, on, on kerosene and petrol. Yeah, yeah. non diesel, oh, on diesel, diesel sorry. and uh, and, kerosene. Uh, and the kerosene. Yes. So if you go to petrol, the price is still the same, constant. If you go to our neighboring country, Tanzania, they have lowered oil pr uh, fuel prices by 5.68%. So there's so much that uh, our government needs to tell Kenyans. Because here you are collecting taxes, you have meant live and bearable for many, but you don't see the money. Where is the money? Now you are talking of supplementary budget. What are we supplementing? What happened with the previous budget that we passed in Parliament? But what did, what was implemented by that budget? But now we are supposed to be asking you, Moshima, because you yeah, sit are, and, and you know we are you waiting. We are waiting we, for it in Parliament. But mm, you see, mm. let's be honest. Today, Parliament has been left by only a few, myself and few people in Azimio, who are with Mwanainji. The rest of the members of Parliament, they are not with Mwanainji. That is the truth. They let, let the truth be told. Mm. And that is the simple reason that, that, that why most of what comes on the floor is actually passed. It's hurried through. Because the opposition, we are putting an opposition as a people's representative. But our numbers are so little to make an impact. So now the solution is maybe we invoke Article 1 of the Constitution, which allows... When, you, the, the, when, when, when the people you have given them a day to, rest, to represent you are unable to represent you effectively, then you take that power to yourself and now be able to petition. And it, it, tells, it goes back to what we had with Article 37, where as Kenyan citizens were able to uh, go to the streets, demonstrate ETC. Of course, many, there were so many voices saying mm. this is not what we want, but sometimes it is served as the only solution left, you know. We don't want, of course, people to go and start destroying properties, etc. But if we cannot petition in the house, then the only way out is for people to to engage in other forums and tell the... One of your you colleagues know. has suggested that Parliament should be dissolved then and then. Let's just go back to the drawing board because it seems as though Parliament, in the name of the National Assembly and the Senate, is not actually able to do their job. Yeah. If you can't, if we talk about the usurpation of parliament, if we talk about the executive having put parliament in its pocket, if we talk about, you know, by the time a decision is being made on the floor, how many people are actually in attendance? Suggestion has been then this budget making legislative arm of government, then everybody should go. Home. You see, I want to disagree with my brother who said the entire parliament should be dissolved. Mm. What you should have mentioned is a particularly Kenya Kwanzaa MP should be recalled because they are not for the people. You see, when you go to parliament, doesn't matter which party you are in, you are there to represent views of your people. Mm. So if your people are telling you ground is bad, mm. situation in Baya, you are the one to correct the government. And on the floor, if you see something which is harmful to your people, you stop it. But look at what happened when the, the finance bill was brought to the house. Only Antiful MPs were able to vote with the Mwanainj. The rest, they voted with the, mm. <laughs> the interest of their master. And, the, and that is why I'm saying mm. the issue is not to dissolve the entire parliament, but the issue is to recall those members of parliament who don't seem to understand the situation on ground and what is inflicting. The people gave them the mandate to represent them. Yeah, but Mishimua, two things. First and foremost, the, the idea of recalling MPs yes. has been discussed for many a time. And the law for that doesn't exist. The constitution allows it, but we do not have a law to activate it. Uh, that's, that's number one. Mm. But again, proponents of the government would argue and say, so for example, on the price of fuel, we've seen mm. uh, IPRA saying that they have uh, brought down the cost. It would have been 230. It is now 217. So that's 10, uh, 13 shillings you're saving. They're saying that the G2G deal has stabilized the dollar. If they had not done that, uh, the fuel uh, costs and the dollar costs would be through the roof. The dollar would probably be 200 shillings. Are those things that you can say are actually helping uh, this country one, one thing forward. there's nothing like g2g that's mm -hmm. a scam mm -hmm. okay. what we have is an oligopoly we have three <laughs> companies <laughs> are negotiating on behalf of the government mm -hmm. and these three companies tend to be owned by people who are so powerful you know so it's not about government to government because government to government means 
Kenya's a government and as to an agreement with another country. Mm. And that could be published in a Kenya gazette. Mm. Have you seen such a publication? No, I have not. So there was nothing not like government to government. Mm. These are the oligopoly. And that's why you saw the lady who brought 70 billion worth of fuel. Worth of fuel. Mm. She disappeared. Mm. So you know? Because she's entering a market that is already controlled by three companies of powerful persons. You know, If you talk of um, the, the kind of arrangement being done. Someone has mentioned today, we were in a show in uh, NTV, mm. that Kenya today is actually getting this fuel on loan, on credit. Oh, yes. That's what he said. Uh, this, yes. credit, this, <laughs> this fuel is repaid after 180 days. Now the question is, if today I advance you fuel today and you repay me after 180 days in dollar, and the dollar is losing Kenya shilling to dollar we are losing every day. Ah. So you mean meaning the time I'm I'm purchasing, I'm purchasing when the dollar, for instance, is ex, is ex, is exchanging at hundred and fifty shillings. The time you go to repay, it is maybe one fifty four. Mm -hmm. So your people are losing every single day, putting mm -hmm. your country to numerous circles of debts, you know, losses from day one to day two, does he need a genius to tell that's a simple loss? Mm. The value of money, the future value of money, that's a factor. That's how to be factor. I, 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 there's something I don't understand here. What has the, the role of government been in the importation of oil in this country? Who, uh, I'm asking a simple question. What has, traditionally, what is the role of government? For regulation. Instance? Yes, regulation. Yes. Okay, so... There are people who are players in that field who have been ensuring that they bring in the product because that is their uh, business and then they do whatever it is that they do with it. Is that not so? True. So when we say government to government, it means then the government got involved in the purchase of oil. And that's why we say it's a scam. Yeah, because... Because there's nothing like government to government. They have not negotiated. Tell me any negotiation. Because if you talk of government to government, it means government of Kenya, maybe with the government of Saudi Arabia, for example, or government of Kenya with the government of Iran, for example. Mm. These are oil producing countries saying we are going to sell to you oil products at this price. And you are supposed to repay by this, you know, with these these terms. And the terms, terms and yeah. details of the yes. condition, meaning yes. whether it's going to be at a fixed cost, yes, so that we are not uh, let the vagaries of the yes. fluctuating yes. shilling yes. against and the dollar. And then here that. you cushion issues of inflation, if yes. it's a government to government. Yes, but there was there's nothing like that. Tell me if someone is disagreeing with me, publish an agreement between Kenya government and another government. So if you say such, if you share such a publication then at that point we can agree with whoever is saying it's government to government so essentially we w what we are now discussing is a statement that was made prior to what we're now seeing where mm. we were informed that there's a government to government understanding yes mm. and it doesn't seem to follow in the footsteps of our other government to government mm. understandings that we've had because there's fanfare in signing documents mm. there's a permanent secretary involved the minister yeah. involved mm. this one we're saying none of those things were visible if indeed they did happen i see so, so it isn't the government that is involved no in the buying of oil or in this supposed arrangement mm. it is people who are purporting to be the government individuals as you say an, an oligopoly mm. i see mm. uh -huh. Those and wait wait, wait, wait. Mm. so and who is going to be paying for this thing us yes so essentially you've explained why it is that our cost of fuel is going to continue rising yes i see and do you know why the, it was not raised today because of the outcry it will be raised no the reason why they the could fuel not, was not raised the reason why oh, they, it will be raised the reason why they did not do it today is because globally and publicly it was announced the oil price have dropped by 5.68 percent so now they failed to get a justification as to why they should increase fuel Which and means. then to make matters worse our neighbor here tanzania they lowered the fuel by 5.68 percent so if our neighbor can do that why cannot do it if you talk of external shocks do you mean these external shocks they are only affecting kenya in isolation Which the answer is no the yeah. fuel the fuel price will go up it will this yo-yo we've seen it many 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 times where there's public outcry and then 
you are given this false impression that it's either stable or it's been reduced mm -hmm. by some minuscule amount and then you give it a month not even long then it really goes up so it's um it, uh, it's and then let's not forget city that the fact that the kenya shilling is losing against the dollar mm. every day means that the dollar value of our oil will also keep going up so you've got the fact that you've got these three four companies that are importing which means mm. they're incentivized to have profit mm. but you also have the fact that we are losing against the dollar and if you're losing against the dollar the price pressure at the pump must increase that that's something i think we owe kenyans to tell that them. one has to go but that's why mm. i told you stop pegging it at three put that thing at five <laughs> five hundred <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. So that you know we're heading in that direction, mm. because if we look at the trajectory of how these things go, whether you're talking about the expressway, whether you're talking about SGR, we're, we're, we're talking about the same thing here. It's just that now it is an oil. Okay, some people have cobbled up a scheme to try and see how best they can make a great deal of money at the expense of the citizens and you of know, Kenya. The reason, the other things which tend to make me wonder is there's no one doing anything to manage the dollar, the shilling dollar. Um, and yet that, and yet that can be done some of the things we are making is actually we are strengthening the dollar for mm. example the affordable housing which is now a very big concern if you stimulate construction of housing the so-called affordable housing in courts the materials used to buy for housing most of them are important materials so you're actually creating an artificial demand for dollar because you have to import steel you are using dollar. You are using your dollar for you to import steel. You have to import timber. Most of the timber you are using in construction is important, and a number of other materials. The finishings that, for those houses yes, are important. Are important. Well. So what are you telling me? You are actually creating a very solid artificial demand for dollar. Mm. So your shilling will continue getting finished. The Instead of understanding, for you to stabilize Kenya shillings to dollar, you need to manage your balance of payments. Mm. Okay. And that is where you need to invest more in production. You invest more in mitigating imports. Mm. That is the only time you love dollar reserves to be able to run your government. But if you come up with strategies that are going to create more demand for dollar because you need to import the materials or the in ingredients needed for these projects then you'll finish yourself what should be and I, that's why i don't understand what our economists are doing they are hypothetical economists <laughs> that's the, that's a, that's the name i give them there are a lot of layers of issues happening here whether we look at here we're talking about the dollar issue we're talking about this whole fuel thing g2g i think is a shocker for many because you've told us actually it's no government yeah uh there are companies which i'm sure at some point in some conversations those come to light um there is the issue of the control of budget and the <laughs> the numbers that she's been talking about in terms of debt parliament again had conversations about where debt should come from and where it should go she's brought some interesting things out all of this now adding to the question that we continue to ask in terms of where then is parliament in terms of asking these questions and demanding for answers you've alluded to the fact that it's difficult because you know by the time a decision is being made you really have no say and i think that's where i'm stuck because if we are saying the one arm that then has a task of then being able to question being able to interrogate being able to demand being able to oversight is basically telling us that they don't have the power i have to ask so where are we and that is why i said the voters need to understand about their people's representative and the role they're playing because if you elected someone to represent your interests and this person is massaging the authorities you know enjoying with the authorities without telling them the truth then you have a duty to see how to recall these people if you can't recall them now you need to write somewhere and be firm on your decision because it's unfortunate you know because you see the what is going on unless someone is not living in kenya no one who doesn't understand the situation we are in today is a very war situation a very difficult moment for many kenyans from all facets of life from education health infrastructure everything and if you talk of the issue is the debt i don't disagree the issue is not the debt 
There is no country in the world today which doesn't have a debt. And I'll give you an example of advanced economies. Mm -hmm. I'll start with the United States. The debt ratio to the GDP is of 120%. Japan, the debt ratio to the GDP is at 200%, one of the highest in the world. Mm -hmm. But those people are living a favorable, better life than Kenyans. If you go to China, the debt ratio to the GDP is at 48%. Kenya, our debt ratio to GDP is at 67%. The issue is, when you borrow the money, how do you spend your money? Mm. If you borrow money, it's like borrowing money to take your family for holiday mm. to Mombasa. Mm. And you're supposed to repay this money with the, in foreign currency. And you do not invest the money in a revolving program where the money can be able to be regenerated. Then you are finishing yourself. You're shooting yourself on the foot. Yesterday, the president, the other day, the last week, he came to parliament, he made a very elaborate speech. And you all clapped for him? He, me, I did not. Mm -hmm. Because you see, if there is anything tangible, I, I, I praise you. <laughs> but if you say something which I don't find it, my conscience doesn't tell me this is correct, then I'll just keep quiet. Because I respect him as end of state. Mm -hmm. But if you listen to that speech, he never stated anywhere how meaningfully the government is going to term wastages. He never mentioned meaningfully what strategies is the government embracing to reverse the balance of payment. He never mentioned meaningfully what the government will do to make sure that we can be able to feed our people, manage the current cost of living, and give Kenyans a soft life. He never mentioned this. He only talked of subsidized fertilizers, he talked of job creations that have been generated. Mm. We don't know what these people have uh, enjoyed from these jobs. Because the other day we, we saw KRA, 57% of new recruits coming from two tribes. So you, if you listen to all that, it's a package of a very elaborate, comprehensive speech, which was longer than expected, but there was nothing tangible to answer questions that common man have. Because today I'm telling you, look at education system. Me, I went through help system. Mm. It was the best model. Himself, he went through the boom, where they ne never used to pay anything. Mm. Today, uh, he has brought so, a new so model of education. Is boom also. <laughs> uh, what they did, <laughs> we paid. What, what they did uh, was you got allowances, uh, but it was part of a loan which the government would deduct once you started working, working now. But it, you, it's just, you are enjoying at least. My friend was wonderful. You see? People, educated siblings, yeah. people did things with that boom. And yes. yet they, they studied. Yes. And even the repayment was soft. You see? Mm -hmm. And in 10 years, so long as you worked in the government, mm -hmm. you, you paid it off you without see? even realizing you're paying it you're off. Paying yes. it off. Yes. Now, here you bring a new thing you're calling one loan. Mm. Uh, selective loan, which is not given to everyone. You are bringing something you call government sponsorship, which is another item that I call, uh, again, hypothetical. Does it reflect to reality? Majority of poor students, students from poor families, cannot now go to school. Yeah. Mm. They are not, they can't afford. And that's the reality. Someone today made a statement that uh, where, where, where I was coming from, that the reason why the government had to revise the model is because of increased population. Then I told the person, you don't seem mm -hmm. to understand the economies of scale. Mm -hmm. Initially, before parallel system was introduced to Kenya, all the self-sponsored model was introduced, Kenyans were complaining of brain drain. So yes. many Kenyans going abroad to learn. Mm -hmm. So we said, what do we do to retain these people and ensure our shilling doesn't go to other countries? Mm -hmm. And that's why we brought the parallel program. Mm -hmm. Those who don't qualify through joint program mm -hmm. or regular program, like the one I went, they could, we lowered to C+. plus. Instead of going with the minimum, myself yeah. during my time was B plain, nothing more. If you get below B plain, you are for diploma. Mm -hmm. They, they brought now the parallel, uh, parallel program, mm -hmm. you know. But you paid more for that parallel program. Yeah, but you see, it was a way to tell those who are, who, those who are with the money now, the rich. Not only that. Do, don't take, the don't take your kids to abroad. Abroad, mm -hmm. let Stay them the study country. here. But you see, the minimum requirement was mm. still met. Because the minimum requirement for university entry was at least C. C plus. Yes, mm -hmm. it was C. So, but you couldn't because many people did well and the number of people who were gunning mm -hmm. for those things were too many. So the bar was raised. So 
Now, if you look at currently, we have so many universities. Very many. And we have people, majority of Kenyans want their kids to study here. Yes. Even Tanzania, they are bringing their kids here. Yeah. And the Ugandans as well. So you cannot start telling us it's because of increased population that we are revising the model. Someone saying that is trying to hide his head under the sun and trying to assume, you know, to come up with stories mm -hmm. to protect issues which we know for sure that does not hold the water. water. That kind of statement. It's really draining to talk for an entire hour about such depressing issues. Mm -hmm. And yet we must, because it must be understood. Because it, it, it appears that every time we discuss this, my mind keeps going to something very simple. How long can those in power sustain what they're doing without some very dire consequences? Because we are, in my mind, heading towards a precipice. And I don't see any action that is being taken to forestall this or to ensure that we turn away from it. And the precipice that we're heading towards is default. True. And default will have such catastrophic effects on the people of this country. Th this isn't suffering compared to what that will bring. And, and you know, even if we don't default, truth be told, the rate of taxation, I've, I've just seen there's a new uh, increased cost again. Uh, um, I'll check just now. But the problem is, if we're increasing the cost of access to government services, cost of uh, earning a salary, cost of buying goods, we're increasing all of those costs and reducing and shrinking the business environment. At the end of the day, even if we don't default, the Kenyan people need to be cautioned from uh, the pain that one we're already in and is likely to increase. What are you doing as opposition, especially given that there are certain committees that must be headed by opposition mm. uh, minority uh, 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 members? How are you guys dealing uh, in parliament and trying to stem, in those committees specifically, tries to stem the pain that Kenyans are facing now and will likely continue to face tomorrow? Uh, you know, something which many people don't understand if you look at our committees and you do analysis mm. the so-called critical or the volcrum uh, committees most of them are headed by kenya kwanza mm. budget finance finance yes you mentioned them even roads and infrastructure but oversight you know uh, the as oversight the only thing we can do mm. is to talk and tell them this is this is wrong that's what i'm doing It's part of my oversight i'm explaining when things are not right but when you go to the floor you have zero control because you have limited numbers when you have limited numbers then it tells you there's little you can do to be able to reverse the trend and um, in reality he, he asks the question you know the dire consequences do you know today we are burying people every day Mm -hmm. I'm speaking as elected member of parliament from my constituency. Every village, we have a barrio. And these are outputs that result from an increased cost of living. Very few people can manage. And if you go back to history, Charles Darwin, the order of evolution, mm -hmm. he says, survival for the fittest. Now the fit, pocket-wise, they are the ones surviving. Those with nothing in their pocket, they are being eliminated. Well, Shima, are we saying that people are dying because they're not able to eat? What is killing cost people? Cost of living. Is One, is there say, depression? Are people you, taking their own lives? What's happening? If you go to hospital today, you are told start from point A. You pay consultation fee, whatever it is. Then you move there. You, when you go to st uh, stage two, you are going to supposed to pay another something. Maybe you are, you know, for lab etc. The third one, mm. you go to the medical doctor. So those who can't move from stage one, they go home to go and look for resources. And since they are ailing, and also the stress that comes with increased cost of living, people are dying very, you know, at a very fast rate. Because if you can't meet the basics, and extremely when you are, when you are suppressed by the economics, as out it comes, as out it puts, immediately you find some are committing suicides, those who cannot, you find they are unwell, they can't be able to cure them, so, you know, mm -hmm. access medical or afford medical care. As a result, you bury people every single day. These are one of the outputs which, which we can see immediately. Frustrations. Mm -hmm. Now you see majority of our people, for example, the youth, 
life is unbearable for them you leave school thinking you are going to be employed yeah you come here you find is a polarized ethnically polarized environment if you don't belong to this particular tribe you can't even get a job you know if you don't come from a connected family you can't get a job if your parents can't afford to bribe you can't get a job so as a result those stress, uh, stress levels frustrations make even our young people who go to drug abuse you shorten your life expectancy statistically our life expectancy was at 62 percent now it's below 60 it's getting to 60 and below you know these are indicators to tell you things are bad and uh, i expect any legislator anyone elected by the people regardless of the party this is a time to stand to come together and to tell the the the, the presidency the the ones the duty bearers that what we are doing is wrong what precludes that from happening what precludes that from happening today because it doesn't People matter it doesn't matter who you speak to if you speak to legislators one on one they will tell you the same thing that you're saying they will say yes the situation is bad we need to come together and agree so that one two three can be done so that we can take action it seems to be the thinking at an individual level but then why do we not see this in concert You know if you if you go back to the way our government is structured when you you are the darling of the center of authority men at time you are getting more goodies than others you find if it's budget you come to rose you have special rose given to you mm. if it is for weekends some of them are given something to go to the constituencies etc mm. so these are the things which make these people to be silent and also the party structure people fail to be dewipped you'll be told you are the one fighting the mm. government but you're not fighting the government you're saying the truth look at israel when they were attacked by hamas what mm. happened the opposition the ruling party came together because that is a time to save the country mm. now it is a time to save our people how do you have a nation when people are dying every day you don't have a country you only know you have a country when you have country of healthy people and a progressive people if you have a country where education system have failed then you don't also have a country do does the government listen to you do you think you have the good will the ear of the government are they willing to not only listen to you to the people of kenya do we have a deaf government or is it sensitive in any way to the plight of the people you know we have a government of escapists people who escape reality if there are people who, who really understand the cries of their people they will not even wait for basil to tell them things are bad themselves they know we have intelligence <laughs> there is no way in the world in the country where we don't have intelligence officers the nice people every time you are bury people they are there with you mm. attending those barriers why are they not communicating and telling the president uh, our dear president things are bad people are dying every day yesterday i got numerous calls from my constituents because of exams institutions of learning they are demanding for you to sit for an exam you have to clear your school fees mm. and very few parents have done that mm. majority because they are struggling to feed their people based on hierarchy of needs they are, they can't afford to clear school fees is that government policy really mm. no. or is it just head teachers who have decided Good that that's what they want to do that's a, because you know they also need to uh, you know to to be able to to operate in schools and the capitation which mm. they receive from government has been delayed mm. so they put those conditions mm. now you have a generation you have learners who you are prepared for a long period to come and be examined at the end of the year now mm. you are telling them you can't sit you can't because you can you have not cleared your fees Does all it? of them come to members of parliament i don't have a kitty a mm. special kitty to meet the the, the needs on you But know I, those those, those uh, But what do I, 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 I have to oh. fault these head teachers? I have to because if that student has been in that school and has been prepared all this time, what is yeah. additional cost that you're going to incur with them sitting for so the, the exam? And, and, and it's because you and think that, that is where they now, go, you'll never see them again. You see, this is But you have the results. Mm. Mm. And it is a reality. We are actually supposed to raise it in parliament to tell them this is uh, we can't accept this because if you force and you you actually impose a condition which you know cannot be met you are telling poor parents to clear school fees within three days and you understand for sure people have been struggling even to feed their families well, you, know, you know I, i was a chairman of the board of management of a village school where i come from 
and f- fees default was something like around 75 percent mm. okay and there is no time any of mm. those head teachers mm. ever prevented anybody f- from sitting for the yeah. exam not once so these ones who are getting away with it i mean there is absolutely no excuse it doesn't matter whether you've got capitation or not yeah it doesn't matter and go to the universities now as i'm te- as we are talking now whole universities and the colleges they have imposed if you have not cleared your, your school balance then forget about sitting exam and that's why they issue exam card exam card is what allows you to get to exam mm-hmm. you, yeah. you know, and the exam card is pegged on have you cleared your school you, you, know what, you know what i'm seeing mm. what i am seeing is that we've institutionalized and we've nationalized impunity because we have people in authority who seems to determine what they're going to do irrespective of whatever else is the law irrespective of what, whatever else is actually supposed to be done and other people who have authority in whatever pocket they're in they're doing exactly the same thing because if i ask is it legal i'll be told no it is not mm. so who allows them we are seeing them doing it and it's being it's done happening. But, that, but that's, that's, a is that's a failure with the minister of education if the minister should if you de- if you if you contravene the laws what has been stipulated by the ministry the guidelines given then they should tell those universities we are going to withdraw the charter if you deny students to sit for exams Sam, mm. then you are going to withdraw your charter you, you go and you know, operate what's, in what's another country in city is i asked a uh, here a question is the government sensitive leadership is from the front if there is insensitivity at the top, we are not listening to the people of Kenya. There is no way the village chief, the village headmaster, the village principal will get their heart to be sensitive. What is happening here is our hearts are becoming collapsed because we are hurt every day. There is new information, new taxes, new bills, new whatever to be done when you are already in pain. Heart people hurt people oh, yes. that's what happens but, but, but you know w- mm. no the um the reason why i'm not letting go of this thing i myself i was a teacher and i was even a head teacher okay and i cannot fathom how it is a government that doesn't give capitation to the schools then allows head teachers who don't have this capitation to send children away from schools because they don't have the means to and yet the means around the school has been withheld or delayed or whatever it wants to call by the government i mean what sort of situation is this but city are we not talking about the same thing across board it doesn't matter where you look huh? this is a thing because we're also talking about a government who doesn't understand that young people who've just finished high school who then have to get a documentation to identify with the nation who do not have a source of income are then being charged it's the same idea precisely you cannot separate you, the two you, you cannot edu- separate an attitude in one place from another you have an education system whether it's the university system it has faults but it was working you tinker with it and then it's all up in the air yeah. absolutely completely up in the air let me let me just throw a curveball a little bit monday the country was put into an exercise of tree planting it was a whole of government approach you are in charge of oversight what was your view just to segue the conversation, I want to see how do you view government as an insider? Well, um, the tree planting exercise, of course, was a good initiative, you know, because the climate change effects, everyone can understand. Mm-hmm. We are in a time in the world where we need to mitigate climate change. Mm-hmm. But although I don't want to appear like I'm opposing everything, mm-hmm. it's ironical us to emphasize on tree planting at the same time we are buying gazilla cars look at the cars driven by government officials mm-hmm. all these are gazillas mm. the carbon emissions to the atmosphere is gross mm. so if you want to mitigate climate change meaningfully don't only do through tree planting mm. you also need to look at other measures to mitigate climate change and some of it you go back to what president uru did you lower the, 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 the cars that your government is procuring. You don't need to buy gasless. Because if we, if we take, we lead it from the front, hmm. we are using gasless vehicles, how are you going to, to, to make it unattractive for other people to fall suit? Hmm. That's why everyone, any, ask any Kenyans, everyone is thinking, I want to own a big car, I need hmm. to drive you know, a big machine, without understanding the effect of the climate change. So, 
it's a paradox to have a, a system where you want to mitigate root tree planting. At the same time, you are doing the opposite. You are the one actually uh, destroying the environment. I mean, polluting the atmosphere with the emissions coming from from the gaslers. The other day, I was at Likoni Ferry, mm. and I I was perturbed by what I saw. The the ferries there are so many. Of course, they are helping people to to cross the the ocean. But you ask yourself the emission coming from those ferries because are, these are big aging ferries why could you just put a bridge right where the, the 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 ferry where people are crossing through because the bridge that was put the detachable one is quite a distance mm. so it's impractical for people to use mm. they can't be able to use at such level of a bridge <laughs> if you go to tanzania there is a place we call kigamboni mm. they did put a bridge yes and now they are even reducing the ferry. They don't need the ferry anymore. You know, but here in Kenya, see what's going on. Uh, you must understand mm. a bridge has an element of permanency to it. Huh? And, no, but it's detachable. And, 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 and bridges generally tend to work. Yes. Ferries need to be replaced every so often. Yes. Bridges Bad. don't. Yes. Yes. So, so you see also cost saving. Mm. So. <laughs> <laughs> even as we're you know coming into the last minutes of this it's unfortunate you know usually we want to look for the things that are happening because i'm a firm believer that development begets development that you see something flourishing that the periphery by virtue of the fact that this thing is thriving will catch on it's like a disease it, it infects good infects bad infects um, and that we have to be so hard pressed to look for the good that's happening at the moment, I think is a telling sign. Uh, and then as is the culture, we often look up to the one who has taken the position of leadership at whatever level to then be able to say, give us a sign, give us something that we can then peg our hope onto to say that something better will happen tomorrow. But unfortunately, the skies look a bit gloomy. And the question then to those that that Kenyans have put the responsibility on their shoulders in terms of leadership, again, at whatever level, is that when? When will the sky change? Or when will you show us that the responsibility and the position that essentially we have given you by power of our vote mm. will count for something? Even if it is standing together shoulder to shoulder and saying, look, guys, this cannot continue in this manner. Even that at the very least when will that happen well uh, i don't look to be pessimist but the truth is for us to get to that level one we need to change our mindset as kenyans when it comes to voting don't vote based on parties vote based on personalities when it comes to voting don't say you vote you listen with your mouth you need to you sh we should always scrutinize because majority of the people we vote for we vote people based on uh, either the party, like what happened in the UD areas, where people are not, they, ne they never cared who is running with that party. They were just voting because they want to punch someone. Then tribal voting, where you vote someone based on my tribe. If you are not coming from my tribe, I will not vote for you. If we shun away from tribal politics, Kenya will be on the path to transformation and will be able to get the right people. I don't think there is shortage of good people and people who resonate with the reality and people understand what needs to be done in this country to re-engineer the economy. We have these people, but the issue is how we do our voting, our voting, our voting pattern. For the, for, the, for the presidential seat or just voting generally? I think all the seats. Because you see, look at... Um, <laughs> I'll give a reference in the... In the in, in, in central province. Yes. Anyone who was not with the UDA, even if you are good, they were not voted in. Okay. Because they were doing it to punish someone. Yes. You know? And these are this this kind of approach to elective seats or when it comes to elections, we must shun away from it. Because when it comes to suffering, as I've said, now it's about survival for the fittest, mm. regardless of which part you come from. There's no supermarket for UDA. There's no supermarket for Azimio. We are all shopping from the same spots. Will, yeah. will There's the, no 
filling station saying this is for Azimio members, this is for Kenya Kwanzaa members. All our filling stations are for everyone. Everybody. It is your pocket to determine whether you can afford or you either leave your car and walk. The Kaloso led committee, National Dialogue Committee, is about mm -hmm. to wind up. Mm -hmm. What can Kenyans expect some hope from that, given that it is inter-party? Mm. You know, there is one thing you could give ideas, mm. but the will to implement the ideas that's another thing. What they are going to share with us is proposal and what they think should be done mm -hmm. are the views they collected from citizens. But implementation, to be able to tame the current situation, that rests with centers of authority, mm. the so-called duty bearers. The duty bears for everybody. I mean, it's heavy conversations and you know, it's not, it leaves us at a bit of a heavy note uh, this morning, but I think a lot of uh, uh, ideas and thought for reflection and again, Truly, a lot of um, hope uh, lies on shoulders of those in these positions. Um, Bezel Robert Ngui is the Member of Parliament for Yata Constituency. Thank you for being here this morning and opening up in terms of truth it's a uh, great with pleasure us to this be morning. Here. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.